everyone it is april hope you're enjoying every day august today i'm doing something a little different i'm going to be recommending spooky creepy thriller horror books to some of my favorite booktubers these booktubers do read a little bit of spooky books every once in a while some of them read a lot of them and some of them read just a few but I wanted to share some books that I think that they will very much like. This was entirely inspired by Rachel from The Shades of Orange. She recommended a book to me, a horror book that I ended up really, really enjoying. I wanted to repay her. So we're going to start with Rachel from The Shades of Orange. So Rachel is very much one of the queens of horror on booktube. Uh, she reads horror, sci-fi, a little bit of fantasy as well, dark grim fantasy. Uh, but if you are looking for horror recommendations and you haven't checked out The Shades of Orange, like, I don't know what you're doing with your life, go over and check her out. Uh, she has recommended so many books to me that I have loved. And I wanted to recommend a bit of a weird one that I've read recently and enjoyed. It is odd. This is The Twisted Ones by T. Kingfisher. Rachel really enjoys finding horror authors that are female because the horror genre can be very saturated by male voices. And it's always lovely when you can find a horror author that you can really get on board with, especially when she's a woman. The Twisted Ones follows a woman named Mouse. It's a nickname and she's stuck with it her whole life. Uh, she finds out that her grandmother has died. Her grandmother was not, not a nice person in any way, shape or form. She does not have fond memories of her grandmother, but her father uh, is up there in age and he can't go to this home to, you know, all of the things that you do when someone dies, to go through all of the belongings and it's really up to her. Uh, she's asked to go and she reluctantly goes along with her dog named Bongo. I think it, his name is Bongo. He's the most lovable dog. So they go together and discover that her grandmother's house is riddled with stuff. She was a hoarder, a major, major hoarder. It is very difficult to move around in this home. And as she is going through her belongings, she learns a little bit more about her grandmother, yes, but more her uh, step-grandfather who died many years ago. She finds his journal and in it are very strange passages. And it seems like he was either insane or incredibly disturbed and kept talking about things around the premises of this home. She really chalks it up to being like, you know, he, he was losing his mind at the end, clearly. But then she goes out onto the grounds of the home, which is surrounded by forests, and encounters some of the very same terrifying things that were in her step-grandfather's journals. I'm specifically suggesting this to Rachel because on page 150, there is a scene in here that terrified me equally to a scene in I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. That book was recommended to me by Rachel. I was like chatting with her about the book while I was reading it. I remember that over on Boxer. And uh, there was this particular scene in that book that terrified me. And on page 150, it's the same kind of thing as in here. I can't, I can't think about it too much. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. So I hope that you enjoy this, Rachel. Next is Lauren from Lauren and the Books. Lauren is a really positive person. She has a larger than life personality. And I, for one, really, really love her, love her channel. Now, if you don't know Lauren, she is a huge feminist, as am I. She picks up a lot of books that have feminist leadings, body, uh, body positivity, all of those things. And 
it can be hard to find a feminist book within the thriller horror genre. Um, and this kind of toes the line between horror and thriller. This is Dead Girls by Abigail Tartlin. And I would very much recommend this to Lauren. This follows a little girl. She's 11 years old and her best friend, Billy, uh, was found murdered. They were like inseparable. And instead of being terrified, instead of, you know, really relying on the police, Tara takes it upon herself to say, no, no, you, you kill my best friend, I will hunt you down and bring you down myself. And so you follow Tara on the road, trying to find this person who killed her best friend. Now there are some paranormal bits in here, I will tell you. Uh, some of the dead girls in the past come out to play and work with Tara to help her bring down the culprit. I really enjoyed this. Very, very feminist. It talks a lot about um, the male gaze and the impact that men can have on girls and women and their bodies being sexualized and Tara will not stand for it. I loved Tara. Lauren, I think you're going to love her too. So this is what I'd suggest to Lauren. Next, we've got Grace from GK Reads. I really enjoy Grace's channel. She reads a lot of literary fiction. She reads modern classics. Love, love her channel. And she recently, well, I don't know if it's so recent, she did a video about some of the things that she absolutely loves, like tropes and books that she's just there for. She loves these particular themes. And so she gave me a lot to think about. Uh, one of the themes though was cults. She has a thing for cults. And so I don't know if she's read this. I'm very much hoping that she has not. Grace, have you read The Girls by Emma Klein? The Girls follows a girl named Evie. It's the early 1960s. And as a teenager, she felt very much like an outcast until one day she sees a group of girls walking down the street and she's just mesmerized by them. And she ends up becoming friends with them and ends up going to their commune where they live. And they live with a very influential man. Basically, it's Charles Manson. Like, it's absolutely uh, inspired by that. No one ever says this is about Charles Manson, but it's very, very clear in the book. And you follow her at that time as a teenager and you also go forwards in time when she's an adult and she's reminiscing about that time that she was part of the family and the murders that took place um, while she was part of the family. I thought this was really gorgeously written. Um, I felt so visceral the grossness of the commune um, and like the heat and the stickiness, like I could feel everything. Uh, so Grace, I hope that you will enjoy the girls. Next, we've got Jordaline from Jordaline Reads. I love Jordaline so, so much. She reads a ton of horror. She also reads manga uh, and she reads thrillers. And Jordaline is one of those very, very funny people. Jordaline's channel is not in any way PG or even PG-13, lots of swearing. I, for one, am here for it. She makes me laugh so much. She's a fellow Canadian, love that girl. Now, she has read quite a bit of disturbing things in her life, and she really seems to enjoy that. But you know, underneath, there, there's some softness there. I, I know there's a little softness in Jordaline. And I wanted to recommend a book to her that is both scary and disturbing, but also so heartfelt. This thriller made me cry. This is The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter. I think that Jordaline has read Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. And... Uh, this is more heartfelt in my mind. Um, this follows sisters 
when they're children, their mother is brutally murdered in front of them and it's devastating to them. One of the sisters leaves this small town that they grew up in. She leaves, she gets out and she is kind of forced to come back due to some terrible things that are happening at her hometown. So she goes back um, to her family, to her sister, to her dad, both of whom are lawyers, I believe. And it's about running away from the past and it catching up with you. And it's about family and it's about the devastation of the past that can impact your present. And I ended up crying while reading this. So I don't know, Jordaline, let me know if you read this and also if you cry. Uh, I feel like I talk a lot about having no heart, but this one brought it out in me. So I hope that you enjoy The Good Daughter. Last but not least, we've got Leanne from Literary Diversions. I absolutely love Leanne. She reads horror, she reads uh, fantasy, and I find that with horror, we definitely both seem to enjoy haunted house stories. I have picked up a few books from her suggestion, um, and I wanted to suggest a very easy to read haunted house story. There's no literary fiction in here, Leanne, don't worry. This is The Haunting of Ashburn House by Darcy Coates. It's a straightforward haunted house story with all of the tropes within the tropes, if that makes any sense. So I think this will be easy reading for you, Leanne, and I really, really enjoyed it. This is about a woman who is very much down on her luck. She has like no money left. Uh, luckily for her, she inherits a house. It is her grandmother's house. Her grandmother has died. It's Ashburn House. She has nowhere to go. She absolutely accepts this home. She doesn't know what to expect. She has very limited and negative memories surrounding the house when she was little. So she goes through the house and she realizes, oh, this is a little bit further away from town than I seem to remember it being as a child. It's further away and throughout the home are strange things. There's like things scribbled into the table, like light the candle on Friday or something along those lines. And there are literally no mirrors in the house. And as she, <laughs> lives there for a period of time she realizes why these things are the way they are there is a sinister spirit near the house surrounding the house and it's just her and her cat trying to survive and she really has nowhere to go because she has no money i thought this was so much fun and I really think that you will too. So I hope that you enjoy The Haunting of Ashburn House, Leanne. And those are all of the books that I wanted to recommend today. I'm going to do a similar one to this if you guys are up for it, probably in a couple of weeks, suggesting more creepy, creepy, creepy books to some of my favorite booktubers. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what spooky book that you would recommend to me. I would love to know and I'll chat with you soon. Bye guys.